Hi, my name is Kelly Hood and I'm a cybersecurity engineer with Optic Cyber Solutions. Today I want to talk a little bit about measuring cybersecurity capabilities. We all know there are a lot of controls and subcategories and practices out there, but how do we start looking past just what is being done and, and how we're doing it to make sure that we're doing those capabilities effectively and putting them in place in a way that makes sense for our organization? So I wanted to talk a little bit about how we can measure these capabilities. And there's a lot of different ways that we can do that. So today I wanted to break that onto two primary categories that you'll see here on the slide. And they probably will sound familiar because they're not new concepts, but really the, all of measurement falls into two primary categories of metrics and performance. So for metrics, we're typically looking at tactical measures of progress against discrete activities. Whereas performance, we're really trying to look at the strategic measure of progress against business goals, looking at how effective our capabilities are, uh, not just that something Thing is in place. So for metrics, I always think of things like status, you know, yes, no, implemented, not implemented, maybe results of a scan or, um, or something that's outcome based. But for performance, we're going to look a step farther and start looking at effectiveness and sufficiency. One example I always like to think of is, you know, uh, we've all probably seen the pictures of a, a video camera or monitoring a hallway, but it's behind an exit sign. And so technically we have a camera in place, but it's not effective. It's not really being used or, you know, the gate that's out in the middle of the road, but there's no fencing. And so everybody's just driving around the gate. And while technically it's in place, once again, not effective. So this is why it's really important to understand what are we trying to measure and what kind of measurements do we want to use? Do we want to simply look at metrics to get an understanding of are we doing something? Is it in place? Is it not in place? Or looking at the performance and the sufficiency of the capabilities that we have in place. And a lot of times metrics are a great place to start. And as we get more mature and grow in our processes, we can get more into those performance, those KPIs to get a better understanding of if, if those capabilities we're putting in place, whether they be the controls, the subcategories, practices, whatever we want to call them. Them, whether they're really being effective for our organization and helping us meet those business needs. So there's also multiple ways to evaluate performance. And this is something we see a lot with maturity measurements is the difference between capability and process. So there are different ways that we can put capabilities in place. We can see on the left here, um, examples of access controls. So we've got a door, uh, you know, a glass door with a lock on it, a padlock, which may be okay in some cases, but if somebody really wanted in, we know they could break that glass. They could probably break the padlock, but that might be okay in some cases. You know, as we get more mature, more sophisticated capabilities, um, we can look at a, a key card access that, you know, maybe we have a pin on that lock and then all the way up to a bank vault that has a biometric hand scanner on it. So there are also, you know, many different cap types of capabilities. All of them are performing access controls. We, are, we do have something in place here, but what's going to be appropriate for our organization? So and then on the right hand side, we have process. And we know that they, we probably all see very good processes and very, we'll call them ad hoc processes, um, where we start at the, you know, lower maturity or lower sufficiency levels of seeing, you know, that things generally happen, you know, sometimes because good people are doing good things. But as we move up in, um, uh, in maturity and start looking at having better performance and more sophisticated capabilities, we're going to have more processes and documentation and formalization. And, and that's going to help us have more effective capabilities. And so that might be something else that we want to measure. So I just wanted to provide this as another example of as we start digging into performance, there's multiple things that we can look at to measure how those capabilities are doing and if they're working for our organization. So taking it all the way back to those access control capabilities, um, we can see here is a subcategory from the NIST cybersecurity framework, PRAC1, talking about identities and credentials being issued, managed, verified, revoked, and audited. Um, but that's a, there's a lot of gray area in there still. You know, how often do they need to be revoked or managed? How often are we forcing people to update their credentials? This is giving us that outcome that we know we need to achieve, but not telling us how or what's going to be sufficient for our organization organization. For a very small, tight-knit group, it might be okay to update credentials less frequently and, and not need to verify the identities because you might know everybody. But a much larger organization might need to have much more robust processes in place to achieve that same level of confidence that we know who everybody is when they're doing the identity verification. 
And here we have a few examples of some different types of scales that can help us with, me with measurement, such as the CMMI uh, maturity scales and the NIST cybersecurity framework tiers. Both of these can help us get an understanding of not just you know, what the outcome is that we're working towards, but how sophisticated those capabilities are and how robust and consistent and formalized they are. So there's a lot of ways to measure these, but these are just two examples of, um, of potential scales that can be used to help us measure those cybersecurity outcomes. So wrapping it all up, there's a lot of different ways we can measure cybersecurity capabilities and outcomes using both metrics and performance, and also capabilities and process. Um, but we really need to think about what it is we're trying to, to get at. What is the outcome we're looking to achieve? And then we can that can help us to figure out if what we're doing is making sense for our organization so that we know what we need to measure to make sure we're getting the data that we need. So I hope you found this video helpful on measuring cybersecurity capabilities and trying to figure out what are we actually doing and is it making sense for our organization. I've included a few resources here, so feel free to dive in and take a look at the different types of metrics and measurements that are out there and some of the resources um, that are available to us. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and please let me know if you have any other questions or topics you'd like me to dig into. So again, my name is Kelly Hood and I appreciate your time today. Have a great day.